All right, you're all good. Ready to roll. All right. Uh, so, you know, I I normally when you listen to product presentations, I I absolutely usually despise product presentations because it's a shameless product pitch, which we do that an awful lot of times. However, what I like to do is put some real life stuff behind it, show you why we sold it, you know, how it was successful in the past. Maybe you can apply it on a particular job or a project. Um, so as we go through this piece, it's uh, typically one or two slides per product and sometimes some payback associated with it. Uh, when we're, when we're looking at the product, it's a, uh, a little bit of residential, but mostly commercial product uh, presentation. Um, so with that, um, what I would like to do is if you see a topic that you say, hey, I would really like to learn more about that product, then at that term, get with your TM, email me. You could email Ryan, who's the organizer, and say, hey, I'd like to know a lot more about that one particular product that you guys showed us. A lot of the things we'll show today, we've done presentations throughout the week. So with that, uh, I'm going to get rolling on this. Okay, so the big takeaway here is when you look at a set of mechanical plans or you look in the building, pretty much whether it's commercial products, residential products, hydronics, custom air handlers, chillers, VRF, IAQ, cooling towers, we have it. Uh, there are few, very few holes in our product line right now, um, and there's reasons why we grab certain products, and that's what we're going to go over today. Okay, um, the big thing, and I think it's more than clear during this pandemic is what Ryan Hoger brings to the party for us, right? So Ryan basically trains our Chicago, Indiana audience, Wisconsin product group uh, through his webinars, his in-class training. We have a hands-on lab. We have other bunch of support people that do training classes, but this is the real differentiator with TEC, I feel, when it comes to uh, the Chicago, Indiana, and Wisconsin market. Um, so first of all, I'm going to just kick it off. I'm going to show you just a couple of slides of our current chiller product line. Again, this is our, we, we make our chillers in Charlotte, North Carolina. Anything from a 15 ton in the le upper left-hand quarter, 30 MP modular uh, chiller to a 3,000 ton 19 XRV. And we even go larger than that, go up to 5,000 ton 17 DAs in the same factory. So all of our chillers are made in the Uni United States. Uh, so that's uh, the big takeaway. We are the leading market share folks in Chicago when it comes to chillers. So if there's an application or question, uh, we've seen it, we've done it, and we know it, okay? Um, the one thing I wanna focus on real quick on this piece is our new 19 DV centrifugal chiller. It's a back-to-back -back design uh, for, from a compressor side of it. It goes 500 to 800 tons. Um, so with it, because it's back to back, it's a balanced compressor. Um, because it's a balanced compressor, we could then use refrigerant lubricated bearings or ceramic bearings in the machine. We don't have to go to a magnetic bearing technology in order to, uh, to go oilless. So with this, we're using ceramic bearings. There's no oil in it. We're also using the next generation R, uh, R, I'm sorry, 1233 ZDE refrigerant which has an extremely low global warming potential. Um, but the big takeaway with this machine and the reason why we've been successful with it, and we're seeing more and more of this, is that the free cooling option. So out of the gate, it has a free cooling option. We can get 150 tons out of the machine with 40 degree entering condenser water with 45 degree leaving. And alongside of it, because it has a huge operating envelope, we can also do 125 degree leaving condenser water for your heat reheat applications as you're running simultaneous cooling in it. So the big thing with the ceramic bearings is, you can see in the picture, a magnetic bearing is very complicated. Try getting a price from an OEM guy from a magnetic bearing, find out what it costs, okay? A ceramic bearing is very simple. Any mechanical contractor that does work on centrifugals can install a ceramic bearing on a chiller. So when you do your tear down, you can replace it. However, the ceramic bearing is meant to be stand the life of the machine, uh, just like the magnetic bearing machine is. However, it is complicated. So things that are complicated, they do fail, okay? So that's the difference between our ceramic bearing and a magnetic bearing when you look at the picture. But one of the things I wanna focus on, we did a project called the O'Hare Marriott, it's a 700 ton machine. And you notice on the normal operating, on the normal oper operating conditions, it's operating at 0.524 kW per ton full load and 0.2985 part load. 
but you'll also notice we can run free cooling with this machine also. So the great story with, uh, with Chicago with the O'Hare Marriott project, and if you want to go see the machine running, you can definitely see the machine running, okay? And uh, the, the owner of the building would love to showcase his machine. We did, they did not run the absorber or the pony chiller the whole entire winter time while this machine was operating this year, okay? So that means if you don't run an absorber, you're not running, your, you're not running all the gas, and absorbers are energy pigs, so they saved significant amount of energy this year by running this machine at the O'Hare Marriott project. And just to show you that um, we actually did operate in this condition, I was at the job site when they were doing it, and I took this picture of it, and you could see on the upper left-hand corner, we had 40.2 degree entering water from the cooling tower, and we were providing 57 degree water to the air handling units for, for, the, for the rooms that needed cooling, okay? So oftentimes in the winter, uh, there's not a huge latent load, so we can provide the necessary cooling with 55 degree water to those things. In this case, we had 57 degree water to the air handling units. Uh, the other thing I wanna showcase is this is our 23 XRV. This is a tri-rotor screw, which goes from 150 to 550 tons. It's the workhorse in the industry right now in the Chicago market. Uh, there's no teardowns, it's got a 500,000 hour bearing life. It is, and I'm going to show you in a second, it's actually more efficient than magnetic bearing machines, okay? So the key piece is the 23XR can't surge like a centrifugal. It can operate with cold condenser water, has a five-year warranty on the refrigerant. It can do 80% rate of change in flow, has part load values as low as 0.299, and has fantastic speed reduction of 75%. Um, there was a study the Oak Ridge GSA study with the 23XRV versus a magnetic bearing machine, which is the industry leading magnetic bearing machine. Uh, and what they found was from an efficiency standpoint, the variable speed screw on average outperformed the magnetic bearing machine by 11%. The operating range of the variable speed screw was a lot better. 55 can run with 55 degree entering condenser water where their magnetic bearing machine could not. Now the surprising piece is it actually had slightly better sound than the magnetic bearing machine did. And you think, most folks think the 23X survey, they think screw machines, they think a very loud machine uh, from a screw standpoint. However, the 23X RV is fairly quiet, okay? And it has either lower or comparable sound to, to a magnetic bearing machine or a centrifugal machine. So if you're interested in the study, you could read it up. If you're, if you're having trouble sleeping at night, there's a GSA study in the link below that actually shows all the facts between the two machines that were operating in the same building and a study comparison of how they compared the two different technologies, variable speed screw technology or magnetic bearing chiller technology. So the big thing that we do with this is we actually put it in a series counter flow arrangement. I did this presentation a couple weeks ago. Uh, we show we can, how we can outperform typical chiller plants by as much as 50%. In this case, we have, is a, we have a series counter flow chiller plant with KW, tons, about 2.269 kW per ton from a system part load value. Uh, the other thing I want to show you from a chiller side of it is our modular type chillers. Uh, these machines have become very successful. Uh, you're, you're, most folks are familiar with a multi-stack machine to get into tight places. Well, this machine is very similar to that, okay, from 15 to 70 tons each module. Uh, you, could you could put eight chillers together in a single package with the piping. Uh, the other piece is there you can do air cooled. So you can do uh, this chiller with a remote condenser. You could put two of these machines with a single condenser. That's a great application. So I have a little redundancy in the space and we have a condensed single condenser outside. Um, so this has been a fantastic product for us. Uh, then we get into our package air cooled products. We have our 30 RB and a 30XV. The 30RB has been around for a while. Uh, it's, the, uh, it's the largest tonnage scroll machine in the market. A lot of times engineers like to go to scroll machines from a sound standpoint. So we go up to 390 tons with that scroll machine. However, if you're looking at going to, you know, larger and you're going to an ultra efficient machine, you look at the 30XV. And the 30XV has efficiencies up to 21.2 IPLV. And if you're looking at replacing a machine right now, if you look at the ComEd rebates at this point, that screw machine really does nicely from a rebate standpoint and a payback standpoint. 
If you're looking at replacing anything, any of our sales guys can do the study for you from an energy study and also the ComEd rebate study if you're looking at replacing a machine. Uh, so they're all capable of doing that. Uh, heat reclaim machines, we don't see a lot of this, but if you see it, we have them. We have for 50 to 400 tons. Um, the big takeaway here, not only do we do it, but we actually, at our Charlotte factory, we actually have one in place. And what they've done is they found that this thing saves about $150,000 a year in operating costs. Uh, when they used to have the boilers running uh, with simultaneous cooling, now they run the heat reclaim machine alongside the package chiller plant. So if you have a heat reclaim opportunity, let us know. Uh, we've done a lot of designs locally uh, with heat reclaim. Um, so we have a very uh, good grasp on what is required to, to implement this design in the field. Um, Epsilon package chiller and boiler plants. This is a vendor that we have in uh, Winnipeg, Canada. Um, and what they do is they can do a package boiler plant, chiller plant, pumping packages alongside. They could do projects as the project you see there below. There's a GM facility that, does, that has 10,000 tons of chillers that they basically built up in the factory, shifted in modules to get installed in the field. Um, what's great about this is you can do a, uh, you, you, let's say if we have a school that's uh, set to have a certain construction schedule, maybe we have to have a chiller plant installed of it. We can actually process and be making the chiller plant during the school season. We have the chiller plant shipped out to the job site and then it's hooked up so that they can have that chiller plant up and running in the, in the short time period of when the contractors can actually do work in the building. So um, this, is, uh, this is a great product uh, and they do all the testing and everything at the factory. Uh, before we ship it out. So we're going to get into a little bit of our rooftop product line at this point. So you'll see here from a standard efficiency lineup, we have our carrier 4850FC from three to six tons and our 4850TC from seven and a half to 27 and a half tons. That's our standard efficiency line. In our rooftop product line, and actually almost every, and actually every one of the carrier product features, we typically have a three-tier approach the standard efficiency, high efficiency, and the premium efficiency. We do the same on the rooftop side of it. The high efficiency is the 48 GC and 8C from three to 25 tons. And then we have our premium efficiency, which is our 48 LC, which is three to 23 tons. Uh, from an applied standpoint, we have our 48A, which is our base model from 20 to 60 tons. We have our 48N, which is from 75 to 150 tons and our 48P, which is from 30 to 100 tons uh, from a, from a, from a you know, standpoint. So we can do anything from three to 150 tons in a package rooftop unit now. One of the real exciting features that we just came out with which was our EcoBlue technology in our rooftop units, okay? It's an industry first, it's a patent pending, innovative design uh, that we have. A uh, little takeaway on it, we have a vane axial indoor fan system, okay? Very simple to service and fix. Alongside of it, we went with a new round uh, 5 16 copper tube aluminum fin condenser coil. We have a new revised control board, which I'll show you in a second. And then we went to a high efficiency composite outdoor fan motor. The nice part about this now is we have a ultra high efficient, we have a real, very nice efficiency product from three to five tons, and then at, at, once we hit six tons, we have a two-speed two scroll, which means we can vary the fan speed, which is code in this market. Uh, so when we went to the EcoBlue, when Carrie went to the EcoBlue fan technology, again, it has 75% fewer parts. It's about 40% 40, 40 more efficient than the traditional belt drive system. Again, no belts and pulleys and then no shafts and bearings. So if we look at the side-by-side, -side, this is the new carrier, the old carrier rooftop unit on the left with the old style terminal control board and the old belt pulley system. And then if you look at the new piece with the new control board and the new vein axial fan. So from a service side of it, it's very easy to service. You have a lot of room to service the unit. Um, again, ECM motor, no pulleys, no belts, no motor base. Uh, for, from, a, uh, from a service standpoint, it's fantastic. So when we set it up, the other nice thing is with the new unit control board from a setup feature, it's very, very easy. 
Okay, so we no longer have to adjust pulleys and belts and shivs now in order to get the proper fan uh, CFM out of the unit. Now we're just using with the new control board, we have this new feature, which I'll go over here in a second. Again, with the new control board, there's no, no strobe light required, no pulley belts required, and no blower, blower panel removal is required. From a setup standpoint, let's just say what we're going to do is we're going to look at a five-ton rooftop unit. So if you look in that picture on the left-hand side, I'm going to go to the CFM, which is 2,000 CFM, and let's say we have an inch of static, and I have nine VDC is, what is, is what's stated in the table. So at that point, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the VDC, which we did. We're going to connect our multimeter. We're going to set we're going to set switch A, B, and C from the from the switch range, the chart below. And then we're going to turn the dial to then read the nine VDC, and then we're going to input the setting, and then we're done. From a setup standpoint, from a from a commissioning standpoint, this should be a really nice feature moving forward. And this product is then going to expand up to the 12 and a half ton range at this. So right now it only goes up to six ton on the high efficiency, five tons on the standard efficiency. Stage air volume. I bring this slide up. This is now code in anything that's six tons and above in the market. I continually see quotes from competitors in the market where they're quoting seven and a half ton, 10 ton units without, stand, without staged air volume. Okay. This does not meet code. This puts the contractors in a bad position. Um, so when TEC quotes the jobs, we are going to quote standard, we're going to quote staged air volume. If you truly want to not meet code, we do have a unit that can not meet code, but we're not going to quote that uh, unless you say you want to quote it, okay? Because that's, uh, that's uh, something that is code now in the market, SAV. 48LC, VAV. Okay, we can do VAV now from 6 to 25 tons. Okay, so that's an important part. This is a very fast-growing market uh, that, that, uh, that we've been gaining a lot of traction on with the 48LC. Okay, again, it's six to 25 tons. We can use our carrier controls and our boxes on it. It'll, it'll do all the things that a large tonnage VAV unit does, but now it's in the smaller tonnage, six to 25 tons at a very nice price point. Humidimizer. From a humidity standpoint, from a package rooftop standpoint, carrier does humidity control better than anybody in the market, okay? So from three to 25 tons in the unitary side of it, no one even comes close to touching how carrier controls humidity, okay? From the larger tonnage piece, we go to a modulating humidimizer control from the N and the P and the A series product, okay? Um, but I'm gonna show you how humidimizer works. So you could follow the yellow line here. We have our compressor and you have the refrigerant flow. So this is the normal operating mode for humidimizer, okay? This was what I would say we're in that temperature range of the June, July, August, where we're comp our compressor's running, we're dehumidifying, we're satisfying the temperature, and we're satisfying the humidity set point in the space. What's different from us and what we do versus anybody else is we have a sub-cooling mode. This is where we are providing cooling and dehumidification at the same time, okay? So, What's different about us and everybody else is, we, again, like I said, we're controlling temperature and humidity at the same time on a small tonnage rooftop. And we're not only doing it on the dual circuit units, we're not just doing it on one circuit, we're doing it on both circuits, okay? So we get more latent capacity than anybody else in the market. So what we're doing is at that point is we're gonna provide 60 degree leaving air off the coil. So instead of like 55 degree leaving air off the coil, we're gonna provide 60 degree leaving air off the coil and we are doing some reheat on it. So we're providing temperature and humidity control, okay? Now, this is what everybody else does, and we can also do this also. This is where your temperature is satisfied, but the humidity is no longer satisfied in the space. So now I'm going back and forth, so I'm going temperature and humidity. So this is, I'm only controlling the humidity, the temperature is satisfied, now I'm only providing humidity control. So everybody else in the market operates in the two modes. They either go standard mode or they go in hot gas reheat mode. We do three modes. We do standard mode, subcooling mode, where we need both temperature and humidity control, and hot gas reheat mode. And on dual circuit units, we do it on both, both circuits, okay? 
That's the critical piece we look at. We do it better than anybody else in the market. This next slide shows you how an example of how it works and what it does, okay? So you could see in the slide before, there's no humidimizer on an old existing unit tracking humidity. So you could see that the, the, temp, the humidity was, was basically fluctuating as much as 90% uh, down, going up, going down, going up, depends on if the, unit, if the stages were running or not. This is a standard five ton unit. So whenever that unit would cycle off, the humidity from that coil would then go back into the space because it's a commercial application, the fan is always running. So once that, once that compressor stops, all the, all the, all the, um, all the removal of, uh, of the moisture now goes back and gets reintroduced to the space. On the humidimizer side of it, after it was installed, you could see that very tight control. So we're controlling that thing to about 50% RH humidity on it. Um, sorry, hold on one second. Uh, we're controlling to a 50% RH uh, on that, and you see where it cycles off. Those are where we're basically doing shutdowns, okay, where we're basically night setback, okay? Tower tech. This is our ultra high efficiency hey, cooling tower. Mike? Yes. Hey, uh, can we just ask yes. a tough question here before we switch to the next topic? Uh, Let's do it. Bob wants to know when higher tonnages will be available on the EcoBlue style units. Uh, at this point right now, we only go up to six tons. We're, we're basically, um, we should see the larger tonnage units reduce, uh, produce sometime in the next, within the next year from up to 12 and a half tons, up to 25 tons. Um, so that's kind of where we're at from that side of it. And then there's another, you know, the other game plan on the, on the applied side of it, but that's not there yet. So. Awesome. One more that has nothing to do with rooftops, but Emmanuel asks, does TEC sell window units for apartments? Oh, man. See, that's why we do this presentation, because you're going to see it. So hang on tight, and you will see that we sell window units. Awesome. Okay, I know there's nothing glorious about window units, but I only <laughs> covered it for a second. But we do it for exact reasons like you're talking about. Okay? Awesome. So, if anybody else this has is, questions. This, sorry, go ahead. If, I was, if anybody else has no, no, questions, no, no, just sorry. type them in, and I'll continue to interrupt, Mike. All right. <laughs> I, I'm I'm going fast. So is it is it a good speed, or should I should I no, slow no, it I down, or am I, I no, good speed? Um, I, everybody has questions, just type them in. Especially if it was chillers and rooftops that we just talked about, or anything else that comes up, uh, type it in. Okay, so this was a great product we took on about eight years ago. Um, you know, it, this is like I look at it's like the fan wall of cooling towers. Okay, from a fan wall technology in air hands where we have multiple fans on it, we do this now on a tower tech tower. The, 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 the cooling tower is basically turned upside down. Instead of having the fan on top, it's on the bottom. Okay, but this key piece is there's no water exposed to the fan system. So we have water that flows to the top through variable speed nozzles, as you can see here on the left, on the right hand side, down through the fill, through the water collection system, and then out the unit. Okay, but there's no exposed water. To the fan system and there's also no exposed sunlight to the water so when you don't have sunlight exposed to water you do not have algae growth in your system when you don't have algae growth in your system and you have constant moving water you have a very hard time getting legionella out of your cooling tower okay so that's a really big selling point okay so from a water uh from a cycle to concentration standpoint we have higher cycles of concentration than anybody else in the market with this tower tech cooling tower, typically a two to three year payback. It's a protruded fiber class cooling tower. So it is meant to last 35 plus years. It actually has a 15 year parts and labor warranty on the structure, okay? From an efficiency standpoint, we have variable flow technology on this. So we can do variable flow technology through the nozzles. But the big takeaway on this thing is the water savings. So in Chicago, I believe it's now, we're now the second highest water cost in the whole entire country. Living next to this huge body of water, you would think that we would have the lowest cost water, but we have the highest. In fact, you can go to Milwaukee and I believe their cost of water is a third of our cost, okay? So on a typical 1,000 ton, ton, ton chiller plant, we can sell it, save well over a million gallons a year of water. <clears throat> Hold on. 
I just recently did a project where we were successful on where with our cooling tower versus the opposition, we were able to save just under 1.4 million gallons of water on the project for the end user. And at the end of the day, what it meant was, is we saved that end user approximately about $20,000 a year, not only from an electricity standpoint, but also from a water standpoint. So we were about a three-year payback on it, and the end user from a, from a return on investment standpoint decided to go with our tower. This is a premium efficiency tower. It's a premium cost tower, but there is a payback to it. So if you have a tower application and you're looking at replacing a tower, um, just get your salesman involved uh, or contact myself or email Ryan and we can help you out. Uh, airflow equipment. Airflow equipment is our custom air handler company. It is made in Kalamazoo, Michigan, USA made. Okay. Um, it is located, we can get to Kalamazoo, Michigan in about three hours. So the key part is it's local. They can get on site in a day. We do tons of custom air handler jobs in this market, and they have been one of our best vendors we've had in the history of the company since we've started expanding our product lineup. So Airflow is a fantastic USA-made company. Uh, any application on the custom side of it, they can do. Pool pack. Okay, this is our pool dehumidification unit. Uh, we have been the pool pack representatives for probably about eight years now. Uh, so uh, any indoor pool uh, application that you have, uh, you let us know, or precise humidity control application job you have, uh, let us know. Uh, we can meet your needs with the pool pack requirements. We have software that actually can do the load analysis on the pool, uh, and we have our resident expert, Sal Stangaroni, who is our pool pack expert. Um, this was a, an absolutely great product that we just took on. Uh, about three months ago. This is our Cultiva product system, which is our grow facility. It's our D Diaz unit. It's our dedicated indoor agricultural system. It's meant for the large growing um, cannabis industry in the Chicago market. Um, in Chicago, there when they went live, uh, there was very few growers in the market. So that's going to be an expanding piece of the business. And we're seeing a lot of attention to this Cultiva product system. What's different about Cultiva versus everybody else, it's an all-in-one package. Okay, oftentimes what people are trying to do in this cannabis business is they're trying to use, let's say, a carrier uh, humidimizer unit alongside a bunch of dehumidifiers in the space, okay, uh, in order to control the temperature and humidity because temperature and humidity is absolutely imperative in order to have the proper uh, grow that you want in these facilities. It's a high-dollar crop. And we need, to preside, we need to provide precise temperature and humidity control in these spaces, okay? But the biggest thing is providing dehumidification control down to minus 20 degrees. This is what Cultiva can do, and they can do it with their controls and their variable speed compression. So they have variable speed compression on, their circ on both circuits. They have a fantastic control system. We have live data that we can show you that shows you the precise temperature and humidity control. What it allows you to do here is it allows you to, sometimes people try to save on the package rooftop unit piece. They just do a humidity control with a reheat control rooftop, and then they're investing all these dollars in controls and the dehumidifiers in the space and, and everything in all the drainage in those dehumidifiers, whereas you could put a single package Cultiva unit. It may cost more up front on that package versus standard package rooftop. However, I'm saving in the dehumidifiers in the control piece on this. So, we're seeing a lot of traction moving forward with this Cultiva product. So it's very exciting. Sterling HVAC, nothing very special about it except for that they do unit heaters. They do, again, uh, makeup air. I think everybody's familiar that TEC, is, this is probably one of the first products besides here that TEC had was Sterling. Uh, so we do makeup air systems. We do uh, unit heaters, uh, you know, infrared uh, duct furnaces. Um, and then the latest piece, which is their new Nexus 96% efficiency unit uh, from a unit heater standpoint. And we could do some payback analysis on that if you're interested. AeroSeal. All right, so TEC is the AeroSeal representative in the Chicago market. Okay, so what does that mean? So AeroSeal, what the AeroSeal does is it seals your ducts. Okay, and if you're interested in seeing something on this, we can show you a real live example in our lab. Okay, but we have an atomizing system with AeroSeal. You basically block 
all of the duct systems, and then you start spraying this atomized mist in there, and it starts actually looking for the holes in the duct. It doesn't coat the duct, it actually looks for the holes in the duct. It's very similar to, let's say, like, if you trip and fell, and you have a, you have a, you basically are bloody, and you have a scab that's forming. That's kind of what AeroSeal does. It creates a scab in the duct, but this can seal a five-eighths inch hole in the duct and, hand, and handle significant air pressure. Uh, uh, from a from a uh, from a pressure standpoint in the duct system. So what we've seen from all the projects that we've done, and we've done a, a, quite a few commercial projects over the last five years, um, is that typical duct leakage is 30%. Um, on average, 10% to 20% of the air provided by the supply fan does not reach the occupied space. Uh, one of the examples of that is in this exact job called the Hilton Chicago, with the results. We had a 60,000 CFM air handling unit, and it was leaking to the space. 12,414 CFM was leaking to the space, was, was leaking out of the duct system. After aerial seal was provided, it was, it was only leaking 613 CFM. So on average, this was 95% reduction in duct leakage, but on all the jobs that I see, so we've done hospital projects, um, you know, obviously residential, we could do it residentially in your home if you're looking at, you have a home that actually has a cold spot in the room in the winter, it's probably because we're not getting the air to it. You can do an aero seal on your, on your home system. I did it on my, on my home and I, redu I, 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 I had 50% leakage out of my duct system in my home. So, and then once we did aero seal, all of a sudden the room that could no longer get, get heat in the winter, now gets heat in the winter. Okay, but from a commercial side of it, we find um, it's been a great product just to solve problems uh, in the field uh, for old retrofit duct work. Uh, so what we're fine is when, when hospitals, they put new air handlers in, they do an aeroseal system to reduce the leakage to make sure they get the proper airflow to the space. This is really critical in hospitals when it comes to pressurization. Oftentimes they can't get the airflow that they want out of the system. They find out their dust leaking and then we have to come in there and fix it. Okay. But in this particular application, the Hilton Chicago, it was almost 30 tons worth of leakage uh, that we saved in this job. And at that point, what happens from there is the VFD now on the supply fan drops down, which means we're saving energy by the cube, which is substantial. Okay. And then maybe it also size, it helps with the makeup air system. Maybe we don't have to bring as much makeup air in the space. So a lot, of, a lot of things help when we do this stuff. Here's a certificate that we get. This is one of the, this is one of the zones from the Hilton job. So it was originally leaking 2,900 20, 20, CFM, a little over that, and then we reduced it down to 71 CFM. So 98% reduction in leakage. Uh, this is a company that we partner with called BRD Noise Control. Uh, so we do sound attenuating curbs. If you have a very sound a sound sensitive project where you're installing a unit and you know you have a neighbor that is going to be absolutely critical of your installation, uh, we could have a system called BRD installed, which then basically helps uh, reduce the sound uh, that 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 person's going to, and they'll do all the calculations and the design. All they have to do is just say, okay, I want to use our piece of equipment, and then we're going to package it with the BRD piece. Uh, for the job, and we'll typically we've been we've been able to solve the problem. We've been doing a lot of noise curbs recently, and we also have a very large theater in Chicago that just just recently used this on our package chillers because of a noise issue. Renew Air. So Renew Air is our ERV piece in Chicago. Uh, ERVs are required above certain for certain CFM ranges. Uh, residentially, we're starting to see more ERVs in houses because they're sealed up very tightly, okay? Um, but the great exciting thing about Renew Air is later on this year, they should have their package DOAS unit release with package cooling and heating in it. So that should be a really exciting piece where it's gonna have an ERV, a compressor, heat exchanger, all in one package, which should be released later on this year. Micrometal, our partners in curbs, economizers, they also make a packaged ERV, okay? So this is, uh, 200 to 8,000 CFM, uh, and we could basically partner it up with one of our rooftop units or a standalone cabinet, indoor, outdoor mount. Uh, you let us know how you how we could help you on it. We could select a micro metal ERV with for you. Uh, carrier controls. So oftentimes, from a from an equipment sign point, we're always thought of as the equipment folks. 
but we also have a fantastic control platform that ties right into our existing VAV rooftop units. We can do a VAV rooftop job from a control side but better than anybody else because when we have our A series unit or LC or P or N series unit on the job, it's got all the factory installed controls on it. So we install controls in the boxes, you put the you you daisy chain the job together with the with the wiring and all the things auto populate from a graphic standpoint. So our our controls, folks, uh, we have, we go to the market as a controls dealer. So if anybody's interested in that piece, let us know. Uh, so we have control dealers in the market uh, that we train, and you can you can basically do your own installs for carrier controls. This is just some of the pieces. So. Again, state-of-the-art graphics from a floor mount standpoint, flexible scheduling, alarms, trending, integration, tenant billing, whatever you need, whatever you have and you're used to, we can do it on a carrier controls platform. And it's completely backnet, so it's an open protocol system. And what's great about the the carrier system is that what I find is if you am I am I uh, echoing now, Ryan? No. You're not echoing on my end. Okay, I hear echoing on my side. Okay, so what's great about the carrier piece? Yeah, now you are. And I'm keep. Let me dial back in. Okay. I think you're fine. Just turn your speaker down. All right. While Mike is doing that, uh, I'm going to try to answer a couple of the other questions that came in, uh, specifically. Uh, Bob asked if AeroSeal works on flexible ductwork, and Dennis asked a related question, can this only be used on galvanized duct? Um, we use AeroSeal on almost all duct material types, so we can use it on sheet metal, we can use it on flex duct, we can use it on drywall building cavities that are a shaft, like an exhaust shaft or something like that. We can use it on uh, uh, fiberboard, there's very few ducting materials that we cannot use it on. Um, in fact, there's not really any in a commercial building that we can't use it. If you're allowed to use it as duct, we can probably seal it. Uh, so there's no restriction on the materials that we can use with AeroSeal. Uh, the only thing that does become a restriction is like residentially, um, we can't seal underground ductwork that has water in it, uh, leaky ductwork like that. But that's not really typically a problem in commercial buildings. Uh, does anybody else have any other questions that I can try to answer while we're waiting for Mike to tweak the audio? Uh, I'm going to try this way. Okay. Can you hear me, Ryan? I can hear you, and I don't have an echo. All right, perfect. I think we're ready to roll. All right. The, the, the control side of it, what we like about it is oftentimes when you, get, when you decide to go with a control platform in a building, at that point, typically, you are – you are you are set with them forever right so it's like the, it's like for the next 20 years i'm going to live with this control platform ours is a completely open platform the uh, backnet system so from a selling standpoint for, from an end user they're not locked down to the you know the trip charges for controls guy to go out there and fix the problem first of all you have a you have a control dealer network we're here to support you so from an end user standpoint it works really well Okay. All right. So Carrier Bryant Residential, I just have one slide. I think everybody knows that we have Carrier Bryant Residential products. Uh, we have more stock than anybody else in the Midwest uh, from a stock standpoint. Uh, again, ultra high efficiency, three-tier approach, uh, ductless systems, residential zoning platforms from a residential side of it. I'm not going to go deep into this piece, but uh, we have it from a Carrier Bryant Residential side of it. Um, we have uh, we have a complete line of residential, the Honeywell Home from Residio. So they renamed their name Residio from Residio. So whole house air purifiers, filtration, steam humidification, dehumidifiers, HRVs, alarms, UV, red link controls, thermostats, commercial CO2 sensors for DCV. So we do an awful lot of Honeywell business. So if you're buying it from someone else, call us. We can actually provide it also. Uh, Secure air and com for commercial and residential products. So we have done a lot of focus with this product over the last um, over the last two weeks. A ton of interest from a commercial side of it and a residential side of it. 
So we just recently launched the residential product, which is shown on the lower left right hand side. Um, this is the one product out there that has third party tested controls by CDC. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's got the third party backing that captures uh, and disactivates viruses, kills bacteria. It can be installed in a carrier air handling unit, Raycan, Airflow air handler, or other air handlers, existing air handlers. And now from a residential side of it, it has a seven inch platform. It can be used as, a, as your typical, you know, air cleaner that you normally use. And you can now put it in a home. It can capture, kill all the particles. Uh, there is a fantastic study that was done uh, by the American Journal of Infection Control. Now you don't just get published in the American Journal of Infection Control unless you have a proven technology. And what they found here is that we reduce the amount of particles in an operating room by as much as 90%, 90 plus percent. And that same technology in the commercial side of the business and the portable unit is now in the residential package piece. So now it's nice to know that I could have a part that goes into my home, it'll kill and capture all of the bad particles in your home to make sure you have healthy, clean air in your own home, okay, which is nice. We also, this is one of our fastest growing UV, uh, you know, uh, IAQ products called RespiCare. So we have the Oxy, the Odormizer, the Ultra Clean, and we have this fantastic nice little one inch uh, electric uh, air cleaner also. Again, it does the same, a little different technology where we got uh, some ionization going on, uh, going, going on to the, uh, going out to, to a little different technology, but it's, uh, it, this is a great platform so for, let's say, our residential uh, add-on piece. If you don't have space for the secure air or the ultra clean, you could put that in the duct system. Uh, you could put it on a package rooftop unit for commercial use. We're seeing a lot of increase in usage on the commercial unitary side of it with the RespiCare product. April Air, uh, we have bypass power humidifiers from an April Air standpoint, dehumidifiers, just letting you know that we sell April Air from, uh, from the media electric air filters also. King Electric, uh, this is our uh, cab heaters uh, from electric side of it. So if you have an electric heater you're looking for from a ceiling heater, a wall heater, we carry the King Electric, we, this is what we stock. Okay, we have baseboard, draft barriers, and then we have electric radiant if you're, if you're looking for that also. Weather right, this is our direct, direct and indirect fired, 100% outside air, industrial type makeup air system from 1,000 to 100,000 CFM, both indoor, outdoor, evaporative DX, cooling, uh, custom, food grade, whatever you need from that side of it. Weather right is our 100% uh, makeup air, or 80-20 unit. Twink, infrared lineup. So this is a partnership that we brought on about two years ago. Uh, they have the most efficient uh, infrared product in the market. Uh, so oftentimes when we go to, when we look at a job, we can, we can put sometimes less infrared units in the space versus our competition uh, because we're providing more heat to the space uh, to, to basically, uh, in, in, to, to heat the, uh, the floor in the space uh, versus our competitors. Again, the typical use, warehouses, manufacturing plants, distribution centers, fire stations, car washes. Sorry. Um, and then outdoor heating, hospitals, nightclubs, outdoor hotel areas and stadiums. So should we, should we also do uh, air curtains? So we got the 500 series, 1000 series, 2500 uh, series. So any, anything that you're looking at from, a, uh, from an air curtain, we can do that with Schwenk. And then we have an industrial air curtain, which basically goes up unit length up to 98 inches, uh, openings as high as 26 feet, 26.3 feet high. So this is our industrial air curtains. NCP, sorry, magic, I think most folks know it as a magic pack unit. We use NCP, we have a huge growing market with NCP in this market with the multifamily business going. Uh, the key takeaway here is we have a packaged gas electric unit through the wall unit, and it's also 90%, we also have a 90% heating option available now also, and they do through the wall condensers. Magic Air. This is a uh, this is a product that we've been uh, we've been doing we've been seeing a lot of traction with in schools. 
They have a self-contained cooling unit, okay? So the key heat piece here is they have, we have a variable speed scroll, which is really, really quiet, okay? And it uh, and it's also has uh, hot gas reheat. In most, uh, most unit vent jobs that we see in schools, they have a cooling system attached to it. So you have a remote cooling condensing unit, it's on or off, that fan is always running. So when that condensed compressor shuts off, all the humidity then goes back into the space. With this, we have a variable speed compressor, we have modulating hot gas. So we're controlling temperature and humidity in the, uh, in the, uh, in the, in the classroom uh, very effectively. And this is just a little snapshot of it. So we have our condenser air that comes in on the, on the bottom and our condenser comes at the box. It actually extends the unit out a little bit. However, we're now able to eliminate that remote condensing unit option. And we found this being very successful the last couple of years. Um, and uh, that variable speed compressor works really nicely. Benstar thermostats. Uh, what most people don't know is Benstar is the third largest stat manufacturer in the world. Uh, they provide OEM manufacturers, but TEC is the sole representative in the Chicago market for Benstar thermostat. They've been a great partner. Uh, we have a guy named John Pyle who does fantastic from a product management standpoint. He could help any of the dealers or contractors out from the training side of it. They have a really nice feature where this little plug-in piece where you could set the, the schedule in one thermostat and you just quickly go to all the other thermostats and plug the schedule in all the others. Uh, they also have Wi-Fi uh, available so you could, you know, look at uh, all your Wi-Fi, all your, all your buildings with Benstar Wi-Fi units if you wanted to control multiple buildings or look at multiple buildings. First company, it's our belt drive. We have belt drive air handlers, double wall options, through the wall condensed units, standard fan coils. They've been a business partner with us for 20 plus years, I believe. Uh, so uh, a nice product that's made in, uh, made in, made in the U.S. and Texas. Uh, so uh, really nice business partner. Uh, this has been one of our rapidly growing pieces in the market, which is our Carrier and Brian Duckless products. Again, we do a three-tier approach. Uh, our good, better, best. Our good is 17.5 sear. Our better is 25 sear. And our best is 42 sear. That's the most efficient ductless product in the United States. Okay. Uh, so we could do 100% cooling down to 20, 20, 20 degree F. Got Wi Fi. Uh, re, uh, so a, uh, a, 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 a humidity sensor, occupied sensor in there. Um, again, high wall, cassette, ducted, council air handlers, um, and on the good side of it, high wall only available. But we have tons of inventory. Um, try us out uh, from a ductless side of it. Uh, this, also, we do a multi-zone. This is the largest growth part for us is the multi-zone ductless product. And up to 23.8 here, we can do up to five indoor units on one to outdoor on four tons. Uh, cooling down to 13 and a half degrees, heating down to minus 22. Um, so it's a great option for us. We also have this 24 volt optional uh, controller and we can use standard thermostats with it also. Mike, do we lose you? Yeah, I have uh, other noise in the background that I'm trying to stop when you're doing these meetings <laughs> at home. That's no problem. But I was slightly disturbed, so I wanted to I wanted to eliminate that. Okay, <laughs> so the key piece here is we have a 24 volt controller that we could put an Ecobee or standard uh, you know carrier thermostat or whatever vents our thermostat with the with the control piece also. So it's a nice platform. Uh, VRF, I'm not going to get big into it, okay? But we do heat pump VRF where you're either doing cooling or heating. Okay. We do heat recovery where we're doing simultaneous heating and cooling and we're saving some energy on it. Um, either way, what we're using is we're using our Toshiba Carrier VRF or our Carrier VRF product. Okay, so, so we have you know all the all the all the range of heat recovery VRF. We have our in support design group. So we have Kevin Schumacher, we have Sal Sangaroni, and our field technician is Greg Tomzik. Uh, we have training in our facility. We've done tons of projects. We've been doing VRF uh, in this market for over 10 years. So we know the do's, the don'ts on what to do and how to apply it. Um, we can help you out. So just kind of just a heads up on the VRF side of it, we can help you out with that. 
Uh, from a business side of it, we have uh, from a we have a product called uh, Addison for our Doaz unit. Doaz has been a uh, great product for us. We've had uh, Addison now for a little over a year. It's one of our fastest growing products. So they do 100% uh, outside air and research units up to 100 tons. Uh, they do package DX. Um, the key piece that they do is they have liquid subcooling down to 10 tons. And what that does is that from a DOAS standpoint, we have a more efficient DOAS than almost anybody in the market. Uh, we can do a modulating condensing unit down to three tons. And we have a one particular project from a DOAS unit that has efficiencies up to 35 EER and unloading down to 20% from a DOAS standpoint. So oftentimes your, de your demand for outside air decreases as certain zones shut off. This unit can actually track that and we actually get more efficient as we unload. So Addison has been a great product for us. It's made in Florida. Uh, new climate induction beams. So if you're not wanting to run refrigerant through your building, and let's say I want to do the traditional way of running hot water and chilled water, but I still like the DOAS technology that's out there, I'm going to look at something called a new climate induction beam. A okay, new climate induction beam, we have, you can, you can retrofit existing spaces with, with, small, with low ceilings. This has been a really great product that we've, uh, we've, we've introduced in the market. Um, we actually have projects at College of Page. We did uh, the brand new Nutria High School building, all in new climate induction beams. The great part about an induction beam is there's no parts to fail. So it is a induction uh, nozzle. You basically put your outside air, your outside air in it. It does a, um, a, a Kawando effect of basically, uh, you know, having like three to one, four to one times the air that you're bringing in for the space for cooling. Um, but let us know how we how we can help you apply it. It's a great product, uh, very very high efficient uh, product for for buildings. Uh, so just a traditional thing. This is if you're used to something called chilled beams out there, uh, we're different from chilled beams. Okay, chilled beams, you required this little three-way valve and you needed condensate sensors because if you didn't have those, if you had a chilled beam in your space and you lost humidity control, your, your, your space would rain, okay? So what we do is we put it in parallel with our existing systems and all of our induction beams have drain pans so we don't have to worry about latent capacity on it. And therefore, we're saving uh, significant on the controls, and now we're able to roll one with colder condenser water. And when we do a typical analysis versus chilled beams, what we find is that our induction beam technology, we outperform an induction beam technology by 40% from an energy side of it. So if you have that, if you have something who's talking about chilled beams, talk them out of it because there's no energy savings in it. And the reason why that is, is because one of the highest usages is fan energy. Uh, and when, I, when we have an, a chilled beam, that building always has to be active. You always have to be doing humidity control, so your building operates 24/7. In an induction beam job, you can shut your air systems and your and your chiller systems down. So therefore, I'm getting more efficient because I'm shutting it off. What's more efficient than off? Nothing. Friedrich V Packs. Uh, this is a uh, V Pack product that we sell. Again, uh, very successful in the market. We've been the v Friedrich reps for the past three years. Uh, growing market from a multifamily, a senior living side of it. Uh, we're seeing a lot of this business. So this is like a through the wall uh, unit. And then the other piece, which has been very successful is this fresh air PTAC. Okay, we're seeing a lot more PTACs in the market, but what Friedrich has different than anybody else is they have a fresh air PTAC, which brings the outside air. We have an inverter scroll with hot gas, with hot gas reheat. So therefore we're providing uh, 35 CFM of outside air capabilities to this unit, but it's being treated. It's not just being 35 CFM coming into the space, it's actually air being treated. So now we may be able to downsize our makeup air system on the job. Window units, we just came to your question. We have free direct window units in stock. We have the Unifit wall master, we have the commercial grade cool and hazard guard unit for industrial jobs, but if you have a through the wall unit or a window unit application, we have it with Friedrich. Friedrich VRP, what they've done here is a lot of these new uh, buildings and actually some hotels have standardized in this VRP technology. 
and the reason is they, they want to get away from the uh, VRF technology, but they like the technology, but they want to get away from it because they don't like the idea that if that one uh, outdoor heat recovery module goes down or that outdoor unit goes down, I got a whole wing of rooms that go down. So the VRP is a package unit with VRF technology built into it. It has outside air capabilities, so we could bring up to CFM of C up to 70 CFM of out outside air into the space. When we do that, we're able to then cut down on the DOAS requirements. And the most expensive product that is on most of these projects is the DOAS unit. So if now you could buy technology that introduces the outside air and treats it, uh, this could then downsize the DOAS, possibly eliminate it. I'm not saying that, but you gotta do your analysis on it. Um, it comes in 12, 24, and 36 tons. Um, so where it fits in is if you look at from a performance standpoint, obviously the low cost option is the PTAC piece. Then we go into a VTAC, okay? And then where we have a sweet spot is we have the VRP product. Then you have chilled water, and then you have the VRF. So this is a very nice, uh, high efficient product. You're able to put it in every room. If a unit has to be serviced, only that unit is down versus being a whole floor down with a VRF system. So those are the positives about the VRP product. Uh, we took on this product called AirSys. AirSys is a direct competitor of BARD. Okay? And what they do differently than BARD is they have a complete variable speed, high efficiency technology built into it. So if you're doing any projects where you're doing remote modules, and I'm seeing more and more now, especially in the hospital market where people are doing remote modules, uh, uh, and also from a school standpoint, instead of putting a BARD unit on the building, which has on-off technology and just standard efficient units, you can go and use this AirSys product. It has 18 EERs at part load versus our competitors, which is greatly, um, which is uh, uh, considerably more efficient than the BARD unit that's out there in the market. So talk to us if you're running an application on AirSys. Multi-aqua, what we use multi-aqua for is three, four, and five ton uh, small chillers. So if you have an application where you're just looking at three, four, five ton chillers or hydronic cassette units, like hydronic high wall units. So instead of putting, you know, refrigerant in the space, maybe I'm going to do an outdoor chiller and I'm going to put chill water high wall units. And that's where we're going to use multi-aqua where they have the recessed unit, the high wall unit, and the universal mount unit with chilled water on it. Roof screens. Let us know what you have. They're required in some counties, but we can help you with your roof screen requirements. Just let us know. Evapor-Cool. This is a third-party add-on piece. So what they do is you take a standard carrier unit and you put this on your condenser coil. And what it does is it's able to reduce the compressor energy usage by as much as 30%. So uh, this, will, this will help save energy on a retrofit, on a new application, um, whatever you need. This is a product called EvaporCool. Uh, so it's an evaporative cool media pad. Um, it does not use a lot of water, but it allows us to save significant energy by doing evaporative cooling on a packaged rooftop unit. <clears throat> uh, this is a recent piece where we're looking at MJC, where they do some VRF multi-zone units. So there are some multi-zone units out there in the market. In this case, what they're doing is they're using VRF technology and multi-zone in the same piece. So if you are replacing an old multi-zone unit, let us know. We do have an offer, option now with this MJC product. Replacement coils, DX hot water, chilled water, steam, condenser coils. Okay, so if you have an old unit and you need to replace the DX coil or even the condenser coil, I don't care if it's a carrier unit, a train unit, McQuay unit, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, we have a company that goes out, measures it, and they will help you out with basically selecting it. So we can meet and re meet all your replacement coil needs uh, with, uh, with the company that we partner with. Geothermal, uh, not a lot of business anymore in the geothermal business, mostly out in the, uh, in the, uh, in the areas with a lot of land, uh, but, if you have a geothermal job, we have the Carrier ge carrier Bryant geothermal product. Uh, when we use pumps, we have Grunfoss pumping systems. 
Uh, Grunfoss is, we use the Grunfoss a lot with, we have an air, we have the little circulators. Uh, we use this a lot on our hot water side of the business. So if you have any questions, uh, we can help you with that. And then we also, on a larger commercial side of it, we package with, uh, with our package chillers. Uh, we work alongside uh, uh, Matic Industries to sell Armstrong pumps on projects. This is the largest BFD company you've never heard of. Okay, it's called LSIS. So they do one eighth to 125 horsepower options on it. Uh, Backnet Modbus, uh, all the programming. The key part to this, this this company is they are U.S. headquartered in Vernon Hills, Illinois. So all their training group is in Vernon Hills, Illinois, and local stock in Franklin Park, Illinois. Okay. If you want to become a certified contractor with it, it comes with a four-year parts and labor warranty when you sell a v, an LSIS VFD, which is better than anybody in the market. We've been doing this, we've been using this product for about a year now. Great success with the LSIS product, uh, and we're seeing more and more traction with this product than the VFDs. Uh, from a heat exchanger standpoint and a dry cooler standpoint, we partner with a company called Calbion. So if you're looking for, for dry coolers or let's say free cooling applications, or if you're looking at a plate and, plate and frame heat exchanger, we use Calvion for product. And also they have a cooling tower also. So hydronics, the key takeaway on the hydronic piece is I feel like we have the best hydronic group in the, in the market. Okay, we have, we have Bill Bailey, we have Bill Channel, we have Louis Menno, and all of our salesmen know our products also. Ray Howell, Radiant Products, Grunfoss Circulating Pumps, Carrier Brian Condensing Cast Iron Boilers. We have the IBC Condensing Boilers, the HTP, the KN for Large Commercial, which we've got great traction on, the Bradford White Water Heaters and Storage Tanks, Burnham Cast Iron Hot Water Boilers, and the Beacon Morris Panel Radiators, Towel Warmers, Cabinet Unit Heaters, Convectors, and Baseboards. The key piece here is just get us out to the job site. You get us out to the job site, and we will help you win the job. Uh, these guys have fantastic track record. They have great background. They know their stuff. So get Bill, Bannel, Bill Bailey and Bill Channel out to the job sites. Again, here's the Carrier Brine Boilers. Again, 50 to 299 MBH. Uh, cast iron, uh, five to one turndowns, uh, our Carrier Bryant product lineup. IBC. Uh, the SL series from 85 to 399 MBH, uh, eight to eight to one or 10 to one turndown ratio. Uh, venting runs up to 480 feet, so we can do packages. These are some of the jobs that we've done in the in the field. Uh, four zone, four zone or four temperature control standard settings. Um, internet connectivity, uh, modular racking system, uh, and then we also have an indirect hot water heater also available. Burnham cast iron. There is a ton of Burnham cast iron out there in the market. Uh, we've recently taken this product on last year, I think actually about a year and a half ago. Uh, so we have these in stock, the Series 8 commercial hot water boilers. Let us know. We can help you out. Uh, give us a call regarding the Burnham cast iron boilers. And then the KN. The KN has got a 25 year heat exchanger warranty. It is a cast iron high efficiency boiler, high mass boiler. Okay, so we can do variable flow pumping with it. Um, it is a high mass boiler, great for retrofit of an existing high mass uh, standard efficiency boiler. Um, this has been a great product for us to support in the market. A really nice success with the KN product line, up to 3 million BTUs. And then we have the HCP product. We've had the HCP product for 20 years, I believe. So. Again, 8 to 399 MBH and TEC stock, and up to 2 million BTUs uh, from a commercial standpoint. So we stock up to 399 MBH. Again, stainless steel heat exchangers, custom wall panels. So Bill Bailey will help you with the custom wall panels on all the units. Uh, so this has been a great product for us, the HTP. HTP water heaters, again, the stock, what we stock is we stock the Phoenix 199 100 gallon, the Phoenix 76 MBH. 50 and 80 gallon, and then the crossover 75 and 100 MBH model, okay, from a, con from a high efficiency condenser hot water, uh, water heater side of it. And then lastly, the Ray Howe, 
uh, Ray how we will help you select your tubing. We'll do your we'll do your uh, outline your your uh, your design for you. Just get us involved. Tell us what you want to do. We'll lay it out. Snow melt, ice melt, uh, basement systems, whatever you need us to do from a Ray House standpoint, you let us know. We'll have Bill. We'll have Louie involved in it uh, to help you out with your uh, hex projects, your Ray House projects. And here is a little example of a project that we did with a custom wall panel, just to show you our capabilities of custom wall panels. This is an absolutely beautiful installation of a project. So this is just this is what we can do to help you, the contractor and dealer out in the marketplace. And then the last piece, Beacon Morris, cabinet unit heaters, convectors, panel radiators, towel warmers, commercial thin tube. Give us a call. Oh, sorry, I have two more, I think. Calefi, these are our this is our hydronic solutions. So this is what this is who we use for our air separators, pressure reducing valves. Hydronic separators, zone valves, mixing valves, and magnetic separators. And then lastly, Bradford White. This is a huge partner of ours from a, from a residential and commercial and our, on our storage tank products. So we do a lot of commercial storage tanks on our boilers, on our chillers, I'm sorry, uh, where we will select the chillers and we will make sure you have the proper storage tank when we select it for you. Uh, we're not going to leave you from a design standpoint. We actually select the storage tank for you when we're selecting the chillers on the projects. So we use Bradford White as our business partner, and they've been a fantastic business partner for us, with us for quite a few years now. With that, again, tons of Bradford White in stock in all of our locations, most common 40, 50 gallon water heaters. Um, and I think that is it from that side of it. It's kind of a quick commercial of all our products. Hopefully, you found it useful. If you have any questions, give me a call. Yep, and if anybody has any questions right now, you can uh, type them in and we'll read them out. Um, we'll interrogate Mike. Mike, I, I learned like three different things that I didn't know we sell, and I feel good about knowing most of the things we sell. <laughs> There's at least three things I wrote down over here that I was like, I didn't know about that. Um, like multi-zone VRF units. I had no idea we could do that. It's impressive. That's new. I don't see any extra questions coming in. Um, a lot of the things that Mike covered today, we either have recorded webinars on already, or we have webinars coming up. Uh, so if you go to tecmongo.com uh, and click on training, um, in the online section there, you can search through literally hundreds and hundreds, I should probably add it up, it's probably over a thousand hours of training modules now, uh, of stuff that we already have recorded, um, especially things like when we mentioned uh, secure Air and Respa Care IEQ solutions. Those have been very hot topics lately. We've recorded those a couple times lately. We have a few more of those coming up as well. Uh, so lots of cool stuff like that. All right, I don't think we have any extra questions here, Mike. So uh, we'll go ahead and All right. early. If people do have questions, just let Mike or I know or reply to the uh, to the email you get uh, thanking you for attending, that kind of stuff, and we'll help you out. Thanks, guys. Thank you.